QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Month 1 Reports. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area in the view dropdown. We've got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Go into the reports drop down, company and financial, the profit and loss, the P and the L, change the range from 010123 to 123. Customizing the report, we're going to go to the fonts and numbers, changing the font, bringing it up to 14. Going to say OK, yes, and OK. Then go to the reports again, company and financials, this time the balance sheet standard. Customizing, changing the range 010123 to 123123. Fonts and numbers, change the font to 14 again okay yes and okay that's the setup process we do every time in prior presentations we started a new company file imagining we had some accounting prior to using the new quickbooks file we entered the ending balances in the prior accounting system as of december 31st 2022 so that we can start entering data into the current system the quickbooks system as of january 1st 2023 we then, going over to the home page, imagined that we entered a month worth of data input for the expenses cycle, the customer cycle, the employee cycle. Now we are imagining it's the end of the month and we want to be generating our month end reports. So we have a couple goals here. We want to imagine grouping together the kind of reports that we might be giving at month end to say a client or possibly to a supervisor or possibly for our own use. And we also wanna be double checking our numbers if you're following along with the practice problem. And if there's any uh, discrepancies within them, we'll take a look at the transaction detail report, which is a great report to kind of hone down any problems that might be present. So we got the standard balance sheet and the income statement so we can start there. Here's where we stand with the balance sheet. You can basically check your numbers off uh, as we go through it. I'm going to customize this report and, and format it as we have been for external use, imagining we're going to give it to a client. We will then discuss the different ways we might present it to a client. We could print it. We could email it. We can save it as a PDF. We can have multiple files that are going to be attached to an email, but we probably want to zip the files at least, possibly put them on a cloud drive, and we can use Excel then to get all of our files on one PDF, all of our reports on one PDF using Excel and the Qt PDF printer. That's what we'll go through. Let's customize the report up top and let's say that we are going to go to the header and footer. We'll keep it at the balance sheet. I'm gonna take off the date prepared, time prepared report basis as has been our custom for external reports. We'll put our name in the footer and then in the fonts and numbers, we've already changed the font size. So I'm gonna then say I want to put parentheses around the reports, make the negative numbers uh, red and remove the pennies. Don't want the pennies in there for the external reporting. So there is our external report. Let's do a similar process for the profit and loss. So if I go to the profit and loss, I'm going to customize this one. Let's customize up top and go to the header and footer. And I'm gonna say this one is gonna be, let's get rid of the date, the time, the report basis, put our name at the bottom here. And then we'll say on the fonts and numbers, I'm gonna put red numbers and brackets for the negative numbers and no sense on that one and say, okay. 
I also might want to call it the income statement so you can make that change which could give you some more customization. You have the capacity to do that in the headers and footers. You can call it an income statement. So we could do that. And so I'll save that one here. So there is that. I'm also going to open up a trial balance and then we'll take a look at the transaction detailed report and then we might do a little bit more customization before we save these. So we'll go to the reports drop down accounting and taxes trial balance and I'll do the changing of the ranging 010123 to 123. Let's customize it up top. Let's go to the header and footer. And this is a report that you wouldn't often give externally because most people don't see debits and credits uh, well, you know, if they're not an accountant, but it's a great internal report. So I'm going to, I'm going to group this with our stuff as well. And some people might like the trial balance. It's a little bit easier to look at because it removes the subtotals. So I get rid of the time prepared and the report basis. We can still put our name in the footer fonts and numbers and let's bring the font up to 14 that's what we've been doing let's keep it standard there at 14 and say yes and then parentheses will make red and this one i'm going to keep the sense just so you can double check your numbers with it a little bit more closely so i'm going to say okay this is the best report for checking your numbers i believe it's the fastest you know report to do that so if you're following along with the practice problem you can you can check your numbers i'm going to get rid of that time there as well headers and footers i don't want the date prepared so you can check your numbers here now if anything is off here then you might want to change your date range and see which of which of the accounts are off drill down on it using the, the zoom feature and then see if it's a date issue if you can't figure out what's what's wrong with it we've looked at the balance sheet now and then the income statement or profit and loss and then we can look at the trial balance, which doesn't have those subtotals. The balance sheet and income statement are kind of nice check numbers because you can check like the totals. If you're checking your numbers, you could, you could check the subtotals as kind of a check. So you could say, okay, is net income right? If that's right, I'm probably pretty good. Although I could have something miscategorized, for example, having two things in the payroll rather than breaking out payroll expense and taxes, for example. And then if something's off, then you can drill down further on a balance sheet and an income statement. The trial balance is great because it removes the subtotals. And in that case, you could just check account by account. So if you still have a problem, the great report to look at then is going to be reports drop down, accounting and taxes. And we'll now take a look at the transaction list by date report. And so let's run this from 010123 to 123123. I'm going to customize it by going to the header and footer, get rid of the date, time. That looks good. We'll put our name down here and then the fonts and numbers. Let's see if we can do the same thing here with 14, which is quite large for this kind of report, but we'll see what we can do. Parentheses, and I'm gonna keep the pennies here because again, this is kind of more of an internal report usually, and it's a great report to check your numbers on. So. We made it quite large. I'm going to expand all of the columns to see if we can uh, use this report and see everything. So that looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Not bad. The account impacted and the split account. Okay. So there we have this. Now this one, you can go through each of these line items if you're checking your number and see, you know, the date and the, the accounts that were impacted where we have the account impacted as well as the uh, split, which is the other account. Now, if there was multiple accounts impacted or multiple line items, then they have the split here instead of just giving us the other account that was impacted. So that's kind of the downfall of or the not uh, so great part of this report. Uh, but it gives you pretty good information so you could check your numbers there. If there's a problem, if something doesn't line up, you can add the date and extend the date. So in other words, if there's something on my side that's not on your side, then try to extend the date and see if it's a date problem. If there's something on your report that's not on this report, it's possibly that you that you double entered it or entered something, you know, incorrectly, and so you can think about, you know, deleting that or changing it to whatever it should be by drilling down on it and then making any changes necessary. 
Now note that we enter this information as of 1-1-2023. One, one, uh, so this is after we entered the beginning balances. So if I go back to the trial balance, the beginning balances were entered as of 12-31-2-2. I'm gonna say 12-31-2-2. So here's our beginning balances. Now, if if these beginning balances tie out as of 12-31, let's make it from 01 01 As of 12-31-2-2, if these tie out, and all of your transactions match what our transactions are here, then you must end with the ending trial balance being correct, the ending trial balance being as of 010122 to 123123. So this has to work because the difference between the balance as of the end of uh, December 31st, 2022 and the, the difference here, which is really as of January 31st, 2023, even though I ran it to, to 1231, is these transactions details. And so that's how you kind of want to see it. This is the activity taking us from one point to the next point. This is the distance. This is how we got there. So it has to work out if the beginning balances tie out and you have all this information uh, that has been entered thusly. All right, so let's go ahead and print these out. So we'll imagine we're going to print these things out. Now, the profit and loss, we really only have one month. So we would only have one profit and loss. But you can imagine once we get to two months, then you've got all the comparative reports that you can think about. Do I want to have January and February? And then the sum of the two, the difference between the two, you can compare it to the prior year. So there's a whole lot of different reports once we get past just one period, right? But... I'm going to change the date here up top and go front go to 01 uh, 31 23 so it's just for the month of January so this is what we have and let's go ahead and print it so I'm going to say print I'll save it as a PDF I'm going to put it into my files on the desktop and I had my get great guitar reports and this time I'm going to say these are new reports I'm going to say for uh, 01.31.23 reports. And I'm going to imagine I'm going to group these together to provide them to a client, for example. This one I'm going to say is an income statement. I might want to keep the date 01.31.23. I might want it to name it. Like I'll actually make this the second report, have them open the balance sheet first. So I'll say this is report number two, and that way I can kind of number it so it'll show up in order that I think they should open it in if I'm going to have separate files. And then I can go to the balance sheet. And again, I could do a comparison between the prior balance, for example. So for this one, you might say maybe I want to take a look and have a comparison to the prior period. So maybe I say I could do it a couple different ways. I can say I'm going to go from 010123 to... Let's no. Let's go from from uh, twelve oh one two two to oh one thirty one two three, and then I want to see the uh, months by month. So now I can kind of compare to those beginning balances we entered as of the end of December. Uh, the other way I, I might want to do it is this way. I can customize up top and say. I want to go from uh, January 010123 to, to 13123, and then I want to look at it by total and compare it to the previous period, which will be last month, which will be December of 2022, and I can look at the dollar change and the percent change. So, so I can't really do that for the income statement because I didn't have any income statement items in the current QuickBooks system but I can compare uh, January, the current month, to those beginning balances we entered into the system. I can look at the change. I can look at the percent. And so notice now, once I do com these comparative reports, then you have the question, do I wanna have a standard balance sheet and this report? Because this report already kind of includes the ending balance sheet or just have this report. I can also have a summary balance sheet report that I can include. So once we get into these comparative reports, you can see you can you have a lot more options on you can almost do an infinite number of different kinds of comparisons once you have multiple periods that you're talking about month by month 
current year to the prior year, current month to the prior month, current year to date to the prior year to date, quarter to quarter comparison, and so on and so forth. I'm going to change this and customize the name balance sheet comparative or something like that. So let's do that. I'm going to save it. And then let's go ahead and print this one. So I'm going to say print. I'm going to save it as a PDF. I'm going to say this is report number one. This is the only balance sheet I'm going to make. Although, again, you might want to make a summary balance sheet as well. So this is a balance sheet comparative. And I'm going to save that. So those are the two main reports. I'm also going to export the trial balance. Again, even though uh, you, you probably wouldn't give this to a client, but because I also want to give this for your internal report usages, so you can check your numbers, 013123, and let's make this from 010123 to 13123. And then I'm going to print this one, print report, and not print there, I'm going to, I'm going to say save as a PDF, and then I'll say this is number three, trial balance. I always say trail balance because my fingers like to do that, but trial balance. Okay, and then we'll do the transaction list report, which again is a report you probably wouldn't give to the client unless you're billing based on it, which oftentimes you might try to do that. Instead of billing hourly, you might try to bill based on how many transactions you have put into the system and use that method. And then you can verify what the work you did with the transaction list. Let's go ahead and print this one out and save as a PDF. Let's make this number four, and I'm gonna call this the transaction list by date. Actually, I, I'm not. I'm gonna change the date before I do that. Let's make this go to 013123. And there we go, now I'm gonna print it. Now I'm gonna print it. Report, not that one. Save as a PDF, number four. This is gonna be transaction list by date. So now we've got those saved. We can we then have them uh, in our folder here. So if I go into my folder, get great guitars, there's our reports right here. I can give this to, to somebody else by possibly putting them on a cloud drive. I can also uh, send them by email and attach four of them, or I might want to zip them. So I might want to say, uh, zip these reports so that I can send them all at the same time. I'm going to do another one in here so I can, so I'm going to say, these are the 01.31.23 reports to zip. And I'm going to put these in here and say, boom. And then I can right click and zip the file, compress the file, which, and you might have a different zipper kind of program than this, but we should be able to attach this to an email is the point. Now I might wanna put all those reports on one PDF file. I can do that with Excel and a PDF printer, such as the cute PDF printer. So let's try that method now. So I'm gonna to go to the, to the balance sheet and let's say we're gonna export this, uh, create a new worksheet create a new worksheet and I'm going to say new workbook. I'm going to say I want a new workbook and it's going to open up Excel and put our worksheet in it. Then I always test it to say, does this fit on one sheet wide? It does not. So I'm going to go back on over here. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to call it comparative balance sheet or something like that. And then I'm going to say, okay, how can I fit this on one page? Because I don't want it to be one thing I might say is I don't really need this column over here. I'm going to cut this control X and put it right there. And then I'm going to cut these control X and put it right there. And then I'm going to cut this control X and put it right there. And I can get rid of column A, put in my cursor on column A, right click and delete. So that gets me pretty close. I don't need these other subtotals for that one. That one I'm holding control and that one I'm holding control to get these non-adjacent ones highlighted or selected at the same time. Delete those. And I'm almost there. So maybe I can make this a little bit skinnier and not quite there. Not quite there. Can I make these just a little skinnier? Just a little skinnier. So that's good enough. 
So I'm going to save this. I'm going to say file, save as, browse, put this into my reports on the desktop, put it into the desktop here and get great guitars right there. And then I'm going to say this is 01.31.23 reports, but this will be an Excel sheet. So I'm going to put all the other reports on this Excel sheet and then use the cute PDF printer by going to the file print using my cute PDF printer, which is free. You should be able to download it if you so choose to print all of these on one report. It still doesn't look like it fits on one page there. What happened? Let's go back over home page. And if I scroll down, yeah, it seems like it fits on one page. So let me see. All right, it's giving me problems. So I'm going to go to the page layout over here and change the orientation to landscape. And that would be the, the next thing that you can do if it's not fitting on one page. So, so now it's on one page wide. I'm not really care that it's two pages long, just not uh, one more than one page wide. So I'm going to close this back out. Let's go back on up and we're going to go to the profit and loss and do the same thing here. I'm going to say Excel and uh, up, create a new worksheet. This time it's gonna go to an existing workbook. However, browsing to find that workbook, it's gonna be in the Get Great Guitars. I just put it right here. So I'm gonna open it back up and then have this new worksheet on it. So we're gonna open that one back up. And so this one, I'm, it put it on the left side. So I'm gonna grab it and pull it to the right. This one should fit on one page. I'm going to double click on it and call it income statement IS. I'm going to check to see if it fits on one page by going to the page layout back to the to the left. So it looks like it does fit on one page. If I go to the file tab and print again, now I can print the entire uh, workbook, which gives me the balance sheet and then the income statement. So that looks good. I'm going to go back on over. I'm going to close it out, add the other two reports. We've now got the trial balance. Let's add that one. And I'm going to go to Excel, create a new worksheet. And then I'm going to put it to an existing workbook. It should be going to the right place right now. So let's say OK and export, export, export it again. I'm going to grab that, drag it to the right. And I'm going to call this the TB trial balance. Boom. Check out this tab back to this tab. Does it fit on one page? It does. Checking it out in my print preview area. If I look at the entire workbook, everything looks like it's, it's looking good. Closing this back out and doing the last report, which is going to cause us a little bit more trouble because it's a wider report. We're going to say, let's Excel, create a new worksheet with that one existing workbook. I'm not even going to check it because I think it's going to the right one this time. We're just going to export it and live crazy, wild and crazy free like that. And then we'll take that left cl click and drag it to the right. And this is going to be the transaction detail or something uh, that's already been taken really because the last one should be TB. Detail report. This one should be TB, trial balance, not TD. What are you doing with your acronym? So this one, I'm going to go over here. It doesn't fit on one page. And so we got to do some adjustments to this one. So most likely, this one's going to have to go landscape. So I'm going to go to the page layout, orientation. I'm just going to say, I know it's going to have to go landscape, whatever. That doesn't fix it totally yet. So I'm going to go down and say, okay, I don't need this column at all. Column A you're useless. So is column B and C. I'm going to put my cursor on A to C, right click and delete them all because they're totally useless. And then all these skinny columns don't need them. I'm holding down control so I can select non adjacent skinny columns. And then I'm just going to remove them all at the same time, right clicking on one of the skinnies that I've selected and delete them all. And then here's another skinny. I don't need that one either. Right click delete. Boom. And so now we're getting close, but the cigar has not yet been had. And I want the cigar because it's still not fitting. See, so I can then I can put this one in here. Maybe I don't need this cleared column. 
but maybe I'm scared to like remove it t entirely. So maybe I right click and I hide it. I could still just hide it. And so there, they, I could do that if I want. And so that's pretty close. The memo, I could make the memo column smaller and maybe I want to, uh, to wrap it if there's gonna be something necessary. So alignment, wrap the text. So that allows us to kind of see what's in there on a wrapped text basis. I also kind of like to see the stuff at the top. Notice how it kind of aligns it at the bottom. So you might select the whole thing and say, hey, I'd like you to align it, align it you know, at the top. And so now you've got the wrapped text. And now you might do the same thing for, the, for, like this, for these two items here. Maybe I can wrap these, not that, wrap them, and then make them a little smaller, possibly. Uh, hold on a second. What happened there? K paso. And so something like that. Oh, not quite. Ah, 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 come on. Give me a break. Are you kidding me? Let's make this one smaller. Okay, there we go. Okay, so then we can print it all. I'm going to go to the file tab and print it out. And this is, this is just an example of what we could do. Print the entire worksheet. And so now everything's on one sheet. It's a little aligned to the left and so on, but those are the pros and cons. You can keep on you know, tinkering with it uh, for the formatting if you so choose. I'm gonna go ahead and print it to a cute PDF printer, which is free if you wanna check it out. I'm not advertising for them or anything. That's just what I use. You could do whatever you wanna do if you wanna keep whatever PDF print. It doesn't have to be a cute one, but you need a PDF printer if you wanna do this. So then it's gonna to go to here, month end uh, reports. Let's say it's gonna to go to get great guitars, January. That's, we'll put it right there, boom, save it. So now if we were given these reports and remember that the, the niceness of the reports is half the battle when you're a bookkeeper, you're not battling your clients here. It's just a, it's just a kind of a phrase that you, but right, because you wanna make your reports looking nice so that they just they know how organized you are and that you're there for them when they need you which most likely will be at the end of the year if you give them ugly reports then you know that's going to see they're going to see that as a negative reflection of your work possibly right so notice the transaction list down here uh is is lands is orientation uh landscape not a problem though if they're opening it digitally if you had to print these reports out, then it's gonna be kind of an issue because you gotta you gotta staple it sideways and stuff, which used to drive me crazy. I'd have reports going the wrong way or one way and then the other landscape report going the other way and the staple and you're twisting the thing around. But if it's in the PDF file, then it'll orientate it uh, the right way. So you could then give these reports to somebody by attaching them one by one, by giving them to a cloud drive, by zip. If you do do those attachments or a cloud drive, you might want to number them to give the client an indication of which one should be opened first. You might then zip them to give them a zipped file. You could give them the Excel file, but you probably wouldn't normally do that, but you could use Excel to then create the, uh, the PDF with all the reports on one file, which can be kind of impressive, although you do lose a little bit of the formatting. So those are the options. Thank you.